Hi friends, this is a paper number PH6503, unit 2, that is the magnetic property of a material in the solid state physics topic. So, if you had correlate your previous topics and uh, and under the title of the solid state physics then we had started with the SY solid state physics where we had started with the solid material crystalline material thereafter we had studied the varieties of the crystals then we had checked up in the semester 4 uh, thermal property of the solid state material and now the magnetic property of the solid state material. So let us begin with that. Uh, our textbook what we have prescribes that is the same one what we have chosen in the SY semester 3, SY semester 4, TY semester 5 and the TY semester 6 that is solid state physics by S. O. Pillai, publishers are new age publication. So, let us try to sharpen the edge of pencil, uh, what exactly the mean of magnetism and so on. So, I had uh, taken the few slides which is a kind of a prerequisite uh, before we start the actual three categories of the magnetism that is the diamagnetism, paramagnetism and the ferromagnetism and the subsequent of the ferromagnetism as well. We will see shortly each and every part of it. If you look at the ancient part of the magnetism it is one of the interesting and the oldest topic which is always uh, become the core interesting topic for the, even the common society people. It started since from BC 800 and so on. Uh, there is a strong argument in the scientific society the very first indication or triggered by the Chinese society or Chinese scientific society about the magnetism. But anyway, uh, that is the history part and so on. Now what exactly the mean of uh, magnetic or magnetism? So uh, consider an unmagnetized bar of a magnetic material in a uniform magnetic field. So, this is a magnetic bar and if it is not magnetized, then once you place it in the magnetic field, it get magnetized. Once it get magnetized, so it having its own line of magnetic forces. Now, line of magnetic forces are always emerge out from the north pole and entered into the south pole. Now, you look at to the direction of the external magnetic field that is this one and the direction of the magnet which was unmagnetized but once you place it into the magnetic field external magnetic field it got magnetized so now its own magnetic field or its own line of magnetic forces are opposing the external magnetic field whereas the line of magnetic forces within the bar magnet which get magnetized recently that is in the direction of the external magnetic field and this is how the line of forces are responding the magnetic material. Suppose your material is could be of the one of the category maybe a, a diamagnetic material, maybe a paramagnetic material then accordingly it will behave or respond to the 
line of magnetic forces of the external magnetic field. And as it is mentioned here, these lines from a closed loop within the magnet by passing from the S pole to the N pole. It will be interesting to know that the line of the magnetized bar will oppose the line of the original outside magnetic field that is what we had discussed about the figure A. For the figure B, if we can see that the line of external magnetic forces is attracting towards the magnetic uh, bar and that is why if you look at this uh, diagram minutely, it is attracted from the center of the bar, neither S pole nor the N pole because as we are seeing that at the pole of the bar magnet where there is a concentration of a line of forces are stronger and this whole line of forces are opposing the external magnetic field and therefore if you look at the behavior of the line of forces near the pole of the bar magnet which got which got magnetized they are little bit showing a repelling effect at the pole position of a bar magnet. If I further focus on the category of the magnetic material, then right now I am not underlining the diamagnetic material because diamagnetic material is altogether different. Then the rest are, these are the mentioned here the very first and very well known that is the paramagnetic material. Here the green arrows <coughs> are shown in the picture that is a dipole moment. As it is mentioned here, it is a dipole moment and uh, according to the MPS hypothesis plane current loop which will be equivalent of this dipole moment. In a paramagnetic material, this old dipole moments are randomly oriented and this old dipole moments are highly sensitive to temperature. That means temperature is the biggest enemy for the magnetism. So if you want to kill the magnetism, if you want to demagnetize any magnetized material, the easiest job is just make a heat it up the material, just make increasing a temperature of that material and all the dipole moments will get randomized. That means the vectorial sum of this net magnetic moment becomes zero. And eventually you can say that material become demagnetized. Anyway, if all these dipole moments are aligned in the same directions, so that category is known as a ferromagnetic material. If one and the adjacent dipole moments are aligned very orderly, but they are aligned 100 percent by the phase difference of a 180 degree. Mani सीधी है तो एक उल्टी है उस तरह से अगर सेट है देन दिस इज नॉन एज अ एंटी फेरोमैग्नेटिक मटेरियल एंड व्हिच इज नेट मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट विल बी अगेन जीरो द देयर इज अ वन मोर ब्रांच व्हिच इज रेफर्ड एज अ फेरी मैग्नेटिक मटेरियल और अ फेरी मैग्नेटिज्म वेयर द एंटी पैरेलल कंपोनेंट इज लिटिल बिट स्मॉलर देन दैट ऑफ द एंटीफेरोमैग्नेटिक सो एंटीफेरोमैग्नेटिक का अगर वेक्टोरियल सम लो तो जीरो आएगा क्योंकि दिस डायपोल मोमेंट इज कैंसल्ड बाय दिस वन द सेकेंड इज कैंसल्ड बाय द थर्ड वन एंड सो ऑन बट इन केस ऑफ द फेरी मैग्नेटिक मटेरियल इफ यू लुक एट दैट द इनफील्ड डिरेक्शन इज मच स्ट्रोंगर देन द अपोजिंग कंपोनेंट सो नो डाउट द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ दिस लार्ज मैग्नीट्यूड डायपोल मोमेंट is counterbalanced by let us say 50 percent of by their adjacent one but still 50 percent in this direction. So ferry magnetism do have their net magnetism. 
okay i do have a very a uh, nice uh, online uh, powerpoint presentation which i had found for you and uh, that is also i would like to show it to you uh, that is regarding again the fundamentals of the uh, magnetism so let us see that first and then we will uh, switch over to the next one so so this is uh, someone's uh, uh, powerpoint presentations but we we can use that one as it is online open ss so uh, diamagnetism property of a diamagnetism paramagnetism property of a paramagnetism and difference between the para and the diamagnetism so right now uh, for present topic this is good enough for understanding so if i will go to the next one then uh, the very uh, initial it's very initial just resharpening the things what you had till in your back of your mind so paramagnetic material will definitely attract the material will by a strong magnet whereas diamagnetic material will repel agar yahan pe dekho to bol thode magnet se dur ho gaye so it getting repel so that is part of property agar diamagnetism ki baat kare to अगर फील्ड जीरो है देन देर इज़ नो इफेक्ट ऑफ दैट मीन्स मटेरियल मैग्नेटाइज है या नहीं है वही पता नहीं चलेगा ओके बट वंस यू अप्लाई द फील्ड देन यू कैन सी अ डायपोल मोमेंट गेट डेवलप दैट मीन्स इन केस ऑफ अ डाई मैग्नेटिज्म इन एबसेंस ऑफ अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड देर इज अ नो डायपोल मोमेंट बट वंस यू हैव द फील्ड इज अप्लाइड डायपोल मोमेंट इज इंड्यूज आई एम यूजिंग द वर्ड इंड्यूज द डायपोल मोमेंट सो ये यहाँ पर जो भी डायपोल मोमेंट आपको दिख रही है इसमें डाई मैग्नेटिज्म में या तो डाई मैग्नेटिक मटीरियल में दैट इज द इंड्यूज द डायपोल मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट एंड आई थिंक दिस इज द बेस्ट लाइन ऑफ डिमार्केशन बिटवीन द डाया मैग्नेटिक मटीरियल एंड द पेरा मैग्नेटिक मटीरियल डाया मैग्नेटिक मटीरियल डजेंट हैव अ परमानेंट डायपोल मोमेंट वेयर एज अ पेरा मैग्नेटिक मटीरियल do have a permanent dipole moment please do remember this difference secondly uh, diamagnetism material doesn't have the permanent dipole moment because on an average when all the electronic shells are completely occupied then only the there is no independent any spin component contributed by any uh, electron and therefore it Uh, the spin component is going to be counterbalanced by the other spin one and therefore if any completely occupied electronic shell material is underlined it is none other than but the diamagnetic material so again if it's a non magnetic material line can without deviation it can pass very easily but if the material is a diamagnetic material it start repelling and this is what you can look at here okay so a diamagnetic material creates an induced magnetic field in the direction of the opposite to an extremely applied magnetic field that means you required an external applied magnetic field and the uh, uh, diamagnetic material will uh, opposite uh, to the applied external magnetic field and they are repel by the applied magnetic field mane wo apakarshit hota hai ya to it goes uh, away and uh, it's a look at here uh, the i'm sorry it will show you after a certain while it's a greater than tc and the less than tc so yes so now you can look at here i'm sorry it's again coming just look at to the bottom of the your uh, picture here it's a t less than tc 
that means uh, greater than uh, critical temperature. So, T is left side figure is uh, uh, T greater than T C that means uh, there is no effect of the magnetism over here, but if it is less than uh, Curie temperature then naturally it shows the effect of the diamagnetism. Okay. In general property uh, of a diamagnetic material, diamagnetic material is a experience a repelling of force when it is brought, brought near to the pole or a strong magnet, a non-uniform magnetic field, uh, they are repelled away from the strong part of the field. The magnetic susceptibility that is referred by chi of this material is always negative money susceptibility negative only relative permeability that means permeability agar samjha jai to how the material get magnetized faster. So, how it permeates to get magnetized so permeable the how material is permeable so how many number of line of force is it allowed to pass through them and that defines the ratio that would be with respect to a the standard magnetized material so that would be referred as a relative permeable material in the absence of an external magnetic field the net magnetic dipole moment over each atom or a molecule of a diamagnetic material will be zero this is due to a pairing of an electron as i said that if the all electronic shells are completely occupied their spin magnetic moment will be diminished off and you the material does not have a net magnet net uh, dipole moment and therefore the dipole moment is only contributed by the orbital motion and as for example glass bismuth and the copper and so on. So, the paramagnetism that means you have a permanent dipole moment the strongest line of demarcation between a diamagnetism and the paramagnetism a permanent dipole moment because this material has the electronic shells is completely not filled they are incomplete and incomplete electronic shell will contributing a permanent dipole moment ok. So, paramagnetization. So, paramagnetic material exhibit a magne magnetism when the external magnetic field is applied paramagnetic material loses the magnetizations in the absence of the external mag uh, externally applied magnetic field. These materials are weakly attracted towards the magnetic field. So, agar bahar ka uh, external magnetic field agar aap kam kar dete ho to naturally it will be uh, less affected to the uh, less affected to the external magnetic field. The degree of magnetization is proportional to the strength of the applied field. Jitna bahar ka magnetic field stronger magnetization utna aapko jada milega but they do depend on the temperature. The magnetization is parallel to the field. Okay, in general property of a paramagnetic material, paramagnetic material experience uh, experience a feeble attractive forces when brought near to the pole or magnet. When the material possesses some permanent dipole moments which arises due to some unpaired electrons. So, when I have told you paramagnetic material ki strong line of demarcation context to the diamagnetic is they do have a permanent dipole moment permanent dipole moment ok and the last one is magnetic susceptibility hence for it is a positive diamagnetic may negative tha. ok few examples platinum aluminum copper sulfate etc ok difference between the diamagnetic and paramagnetic paramagnetic materials are attracted by the external magnetic field whereas the diamagnetic materials are the repelled by this one paramagnetic material have at least one unpaired electron in the system but diamagnetic material have all their electrons are paired the magnetic field created by a permanent magnetic materials are in the direction of the external magnetic field whereas the magnetic field created by the diamagnetic materials are opposing the 
direction of the external magnetic field. So, magnetic field created by a magnetic material in the direction of external field. So, वो हो जाता है paramagnetic material. अगर वो opposite कर रहा है तो diamagnetic. Para, last one, the paramagnetism is a stronger magnetic behavior exhibited only by selective material, whereas diamagnetic is a weak magnetic behavior and generally shown by all materials and easily suppressed in the presence of a strong magnetic field. बहुत ही important line कि paramagnetism तो कोई ना कोई material दिखाएगा जिसमें unpaired electron होगा जिसकी electronic shell incomplete होगी तभी जाके dipole moment होगा तभी वो बताएगा but where is the diamagnetism अगर core electron shell ले लो आप तो वो 100% occupied ही रहता है so each and every material having a always tendency to show the diamagnetism so यहाँ पे लिखा है where as the diamagnetism is a weak magnetic behavior generally shown by old materials and easily suppressed in the presence of the stronger magnetic field okay go to the next and that is a thank you so this is basically online powerpoint presentations uh, and that is I just uh, selected for you and then now uh, again go to our uh, regular curriculum and that would be uh, the varieties of the material so now let us see so once you have a clarity about the demarcation between the diamagnetism and the paramagnetism let us focus uh, how exactly and what exactly the angular magnetic moment which is the core understanding required for the diamagnetic material how I should understood that one so agar yahan pe quantum concept or classical concept ki baat kare to uh, classically uh, we can say that the orientation of a dipole moment may be the induced one or a permanent but it could be in the any direction right from uh, along the direction that is a parallel to the external field to the 100 percent inverse of the uh, that is 180 degree com context to the applied external magnetic field they can arrange their own position and that is what the mean of classical theory whereas in case of quantum concept they having a orbital quantum number an orbital quantum number is gives us the space quantization that means a certain positions are only allowed and permissible and because of this the uh, orbital quantum number uh, in, uh, uh, sorry the angular uh, magnetic moments uh, multiplied by the minus e by 2 m will give me the angular momentum or dipole momentum and the angular momentum. and this is uh, uh, presence here uh, the ratio of uh, magnetic moment to the angular moment magnetic moment to the angular moment minus mu el upon angular moment if i will take this ratio it always remain constant e by 2m e by 2m and this is called a gyro magnetic ratio this is called a gyro magnetic ratio so that is here it is also known as a orbital magnetic mechanical ratio of an electron but it is rarely used word orbital magneto mechanical ratio of an electron okay so the l is multiplied by e by 2m so e by 2m is the uh, magnetic moment uh, equation is uh, minus e by 2 m into angular momentum and angular momentum is defined by the s l and uh, l should multiply l is this orbital quantum number and that is l over here into h upon 2 pi so this is how the mu e l or the magnetic moment can be calculated as per the equation 9.10 
what is a diamagnetism as we have seen in the previous powerpoint presentation but still diamagnetic material reduces the density of the line of forces while paramagnetic will increases to yahan pe do figures di gayi hai yahan pe circle is the body magnetic material is a diamagnetic so it start repelling so yahan ka agar main agar yahan agar dekho to line of forces ki density kam ho gayi so that's why they have written reduces the density of a line of forces वेयर अगर ये पैरामैग्नेटिक रिंग होती या तो पैरामैग्नेटिक मटेरियल होता तो इट विल अट्रैक्ट द सन बिकॉज दे डू हैव द पॉजिटिव ससेप्टिबिलिटी एंड देयर फॉर इट इज हैपनिंग द डाई मैग्नेटिक मटेरियल हैव अ जीरो मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट इन एब्सेंस ऑफ अ मैग्नेटिक एक्सटर्नल फील्ड एंड दिस इज बिकॉज देर इज नो परमानेंट डाइपोल मोमेंट जैसे ही मैग्नेटिक फील्ड गया so induced dipole moment is also vanish off and therefore in absence of external magnetic field diamagnetic material have a zero magnetic moment very important concept to be remember so let us check it up the classical theory of a diamagnetism classical theory as i told in beginning the classical theory gives us the feeling that if magnetic material are considered under the umbrella of a classical theory then the dipole or the induced dipole moment can reorient in between 0 to 180 degree anywhere so right from the parallel to the external magnetic field to the opposite direction of the external magnetic field and uh, uh, this is Uh, the theory was developed by a scientist Langevin so to honor him it is also known as a Langevin theory it is also known as a classical theory of a diamagnetism or it is in broadly one can say it's a diamagnetic theory okay so now the force is given by the centripetal force as the um, the electron is revolved around the uh, एटम और न्यूक्लियस इन द ऑर्बिटल सो अगर कोई एक लूप में इलेक्ट्रॉन घूम रहा है सो नेचुरली इट विल बी शोइंग यू अ डायफोल मोमेंट इफ यू पुट इट योर यूज योर राइट हैंड साइड थम रूल पुट योर फिंगर एंड रैप अराउंड द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द रॉमिंग ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन देन योर राइट हैंड साइड थम विल इंडिकेटिंग द डिरेक्शन ऑफ द मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट एंड राइट नाउ इट्स अ फोर्स एंड देर फोर Uh, if i will consider uh, if i want to check it up the direction of the force it was opposing uh, direction but anyway right now let us calculate how i can calculate the fundamental larmor frequency so omega 0 so let us say f 0 i can show you the figure which is in the third slide so this is a nucleus nucleus having a uh, atomic number is let us say z so z is available number of the charges over the nucleus so um, because of a nucleus uh, nuclear force there is a centripetal force and this centripetal force allow us to rotate across the nucleus and uh, Uh, this uh, f0 that is a, a centripetal force which is counterbalanced by the lorentz force and therefore it is rotating in an orbit so let us go back to our the side to be slide to be discuss so f0 is a centripetal force which is inside the uh, in the direction of the nuclear Uh, nucleus and therefore it's m v square by r as we are knowing that v square is equal to r omega but right now there is no external magnetic field so omega 0 ke suffix omega ke suffix mein main zero rakh raha hu which give me the indication at present con present point there is no external magnetic field or the magnetic field is zero 
so v square is equal to r square omega square so i am replacing just v square by the r square omega so m r square omega 0 square divided by r this is uh, equation for the f0 and now uh, this can be r will be cancelled by uh, the r power so m r omega square is i can write it over here and this force centripetal force that is m r omega 0 square can be counterbalanced by the lorentz force or you can say the coulomb uh, sorry the coulombian force and that would be and that would be z square upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r square uh, i am sorry this is a columbian force and this is a uh, centripetal force so uh, if i can equate them because they both having in the same directions so uh, from that equation i can able to find it out the omega 0 and omega 0 is called larmor frequency so that larmor frequency is given by agar iska me root nikalu so it would be root z square upon 4 pi m epsilon 0 r cube so it is like this where z is nothing but the your atomic number and over here it is a available number of nucleus is written here well uh, the angular velocity is omega 0 around the nucleus of a charge z e so uh, z is a z is a number and e is a charge so total charge associated to that particular atom is z e okay so agar mein, uh, susceptibility versus temperature ka graph draw kar raha hu, it looks like uh, exponential decay agar mein x versus t ka graph draw kar raha hu, so below to that uh, portion of the uh, paramagnetic material uh, lower than that that is a transition temperature is a Curie temperature so above uh, below to that particular temperature it shows the uh, ferromagnetism but above the TC you can show uh, that material will represent the paramagnetism so ferromagnetism below TC and above TC paramagnetism so with this uh, let's go to the next and uh, this is uh, magnetic moment can be uh, measured with the lens uh, low and that is ml is equal to i into a so if the electron is rotating if i am visualizing electron is rotating within a orbit the uh, the cross sectional view of the orbit that would be a area of it so it would be pi r square and i can be written as a e by t and from this equation and using the concept of the omega 0 is equal to v by r right then we can having a e omega 0 r square by 2 e omega 0 r square by 2 so r square is as it is e is as it is pi by t pi by t well gives us the the relation equals to e omega square uh, sorry e omega 0 r square by 2 so basically uh, what exactly we are doing uh, to be frankly speaking uh, and 1 over t is like a frequency so i am writing here omega okay now uh, uh, pi omega 0 uh, and if i multiply by 2 then it's a 2 pi f sorry frequency 2 pi f is a frequency because 1 over t is a frequency and uh, 2 pi f so if i'm multiplying by 2 i should divide by 2 so that 2 is over here so 2 pi f is nothing but the source of omega 0 so uh, e 2 pi f is replaced by omega 0 r square divided by 2 and if now i place my entire system into the external magnetic field so then i have to think for the then one has to think for its uh, lorentz force and in lorentz force 
the applied electrical field is zero so actually it become minus q e that becomes zero uh, plus v cross b and uh, therefore the lorentz force at a perpendicular direction because v is in the direction of perpendicular direction of the direction of force and therefore sin 90 or sin pi by 2 that will because b cross v v cross b uh, will cancel out the uh, availability of sin theta because it is a 90 degree and that is equal to 1 so ultimately equation become uh, minus b e omega r and uh, minus b e omega r where omega is without zero so this is a noticeable thing agar suffix mein zero aa raha hai that means in absence of a magnetic field or suffix mein omega ke suffix mein zero nahi aa raha hai then it is a uh, in presence of a magnetic field okay so now uh, in this particular uh, e uh, equation of motion can be written as f of m is equal to the difference between the f0 that is its centripetal force minus Lorentz force and if I will take this one I am enabled to write it out the equation uh, <coughs> centripetal force is equal to the Coulombian force minus Lorentz force and if I will set this equation uh, then I can put it into the, the shape. Now here this concept uh, q is equal to less than 0 or q is equal to greater than 0 so we will be belonging to this q is equal to less than 0 but if the q is the negative charge then again this upward arrow become the lower uh, arrow and therefore this uh, direction of uh, direction of the force existed on the motion of the electron which is rotating around the nucleus and uh, that would be you can check it out with your right hand side thumb rule here in the figure 9.10 the field direction is inside the book so it's a cross is given over here okay so with this Finally, I do have the equation omega square is equal to z square upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r cube minus e b omega. So, ek yaha pe omega or yaha pe e b omega by m. So, ultimately I can make an equation omega square minus e b omega upon m is equal to the right hand side that is equivalent of the Coulombian forces and uh, from this if I will go with to find it out the root associated to that equation uh, quadratic equation then it would be minus b plus or minus under root of b square minus 4 ac upon 2a. If this is a quadratic equation I will can use for my above equation that is omega square e b omega upon m minus z e square upon 4 pi m epsilon 0 r cube. So, this will give me the omega is equal to minus e b upon m this is your b factor e b upon m and m is your coming from the equation that is a mass associated to the particle over here the particle is the electron so e minus e b upon m uh, plus or minus under root b square minus 4 ac so c is a negative over here so it become a positive and e square b square upon m square that you can check it up from the above equations and finally omega is equal to minus e b upon 2 m plus or minus under root of omega square plus e square b square upon 4 m square and that is the final equation equation number 9.26 is the representing the Larmor frequency in 
field or in external field and uh, since e b upon 2 m is equal to uh, omega 0 uh, you can rewrite this term equivalent of omega 0 minus e b upon 2 m if e b upon 2 m is much much smaller than the omega 0. So, now this is a trick equation that y e b by 2 m is much smaller value. Uh, b is applied or the induced field and that induced field is very very feeble to or reorient a one electron and therefore you can equate them as e b upon 2 m is much smaller than the omega 0. So, now the rewriting of this equation is omega this part is going on this side. So, omega plus or minus omega 0 equal to del omega equal to del omega. So, agar ye isme omega 0 plus add kar rahe ho to wo bhi change of omega hai. Agar omega me minus omega 0 kar rahe ho to wo bhi my change in omega hai. That's why this is referred as when you take this component on left side this will referred as a delta omega ok. So, uh, this is a outcome this is the outcome of the previous equation what you have made here in a box that is omega is equal to uh, omega plus or minus omega 0 is equal to del omega and that is equal to minus e b upon 2 m. So, uh, uh, the positive negative sign of a omega 0 indicates that those electrons whose orbital moments were parallel to the field are slowed down and those whose moments are anti parallel are speed up by e b by m and this discussion result and conclusions is known as a Larmor theorem. So, the box equation what we have seen in the previous slide that is nothing but the equation 9.26 equation 9.27 is representing Larmor theorem. Okay. So, in continuation of this delta omega is equal to minus e b upon 2 m. It is also equivalent of 2 pi delta nu delta omega is equal to agar dhyan se dekha jai to 2 pi nu hota hai ab 2 pi constant hai to delta function will only find, uh, effective on the delta nu mane 2 pi delta nu jitni frequency change honi chahiye and that is again equivalent to of minus eb upon 2m so if i if i will make a equation of delta nu is equal to minus eb upon 4 pi m this is representing related or a corresponding change in the magnetic moment of the electron